Yo, hello, what's up? <laughs> All right, we're going to wait for a while, then only we will start. All right, so uh, hopefully that you already have these notes. So today, mainly, we will do uh, chapter two, Punya Things. Okay. All right, so now we wait for like a minute like that, then I will, I will start, yeah. Okay. All right, so today mainly we will do form for chapter two, Punya Things, right? So most of your upcoming exam definitely going to have this chapter because it's one of the front Punya chapter. Ma. And then if we have extra time, then maybe we're going to do a bit of chapter one. Lah. So because chapter one right, is something that you only will see in your first term exam. And then after that, you are never going to see it ever again. So it's only important maybe for your, like your first term Punya uh, I would say like objective. Okay. So uh, we will do chapter two uh, mainly. Okay. Then behind the chapter three, I don't think we have time to go through. So behind chapter three, you just go through yourself. Anything you can ask me. Okay, uh. Now, so for form four chapter two, one of the most uh, basic thing, most important thing is the cell punya organelles, also known as 2.1, the cell structures and the functions. So you need to know like what each structure is, their name, not the label, and know their function. So it's just like labeling the organs in your body and know their function. So it's something like that. So inside cells, all these structures over here, remember, are called organelles, which is like literally translated into organ in the cells. Okay, uh. Now, so what I have here actually is sort of like a 3D punya diagram, uh, which usually question will really give you 3D, question usually will give you 2D punya diagram. Uh. Okay, later, later we'll do a bit of questions showing 2D diagram, and also I will draw some of the structures over here. Uh. Now, let's start from A first. Now, we're going to label here, and then we're going to write down the functions as well to like maybe refresh a bit your memory. Uh. Okay, uh. Now, come A. So A, this is like the most basic thing, the round circle thing inside your cell at the center of the cell. So this one, by now, you should know what it is. You don't know, you let people laugh only, I tell you. <laughs> so this is your nucleus, right? So nucleus function since form one also related, right? So what was it? Is to basically control all cell activities. Oh. Now, on top of that, if questions ask you a too much punya question about their function, right? Okay, you actually can write this as well, which also you can say contains DNA. The genetic information of the cell. Law. Okay, uh. So, and also some more right? nucleus. Inside of it, right, there's a few structures you must know how to label. So inside it, inside the nucleus, right? There's like another nucleus inside it. Ah, so this one, if question ever asks you the label, it's called nucleo 
Let's. By the way, this thing, right, you also need to need to know it when you're doing your Form 4, Chapter 6, the cell division and chapter, got mentioned also. Right? And inside your nucleus, there's a lot of tiny, tiny strands. One dot, one, not dot, lah, one line, one line of threads. These are something called chromatins, or you also can call them as chromosome. So again, for those of my students in Form 4, Chapter 6, recently also we've mentioned all these. Ah. And the outer layer of the nucleus, this is called the nuclear membrane, which is the membranes of the nucleus. Okay. Ah. Now, then let's look at structure B. Now, can tell now what is structure B? Okay, over here. So B, you can see, I already give you an enlarged structure over here. Inside here is curling, curling, curling like that one. Yes, so this one very simple, right? It's basically your mitochondria. Yeah, something we learned also since from one, correct? So this one, the function is very basic, but you need to pay attention on the marks. Now, if they ask one mark, you can just write the thing that you learned since from one, which is generate. Generate what? Energy law which is, you must say, in the form of ATP. Now, a lot of you then ask me what is ATP. So ATP is a kind of chemical molecule that actually will give out energy. So in chapter three, actually, you all got to learn about how ATP actually provide energy, but today we won't have time to go through chapter three. Lah. All right, so ATP is something you can write in short form. Now, if the question asks you a two marks in your function, you say generate energy in the form of ATP is only one mark. So the second mark, you actually got to name what is the process I use to generate energy. Who here remember, like, what is the process that occurs inside the mitochondria to give you energy? Is this something since like Form 2, Form 3 also got to learn? But so, yes, Georgina Rania, very good. Still remember, uh, yeah, it's called cellular respiration. So you can, if they ask you a second mark, you can say through the process of cellular respiration. Whereby this is something that we learned since very like last time from three, whereby it's a process of oxygen combining with glucose to give you energy. Law. I know this process, yes, also gives you carbon dioxide and water, but carbon dioxide and water is like the byproduct. The main product is energy. So when every time we breathe in oxygen, it's for your cells to use. So your oxygen combines the oxygen that you use plus the glucose that you eat combined ping, to become energy. Now, how do they actually use oxygen and glucose to produce energy? It's also, we will learn it in chapter seven next time, uh, respiration when you chapter. Now, start to become serious already. So now the things you're going to go through are slightly more commonly asked. For example, C. Now see this thing right here. You actually have me add an arrow over here. Remember, these dots I actually found on top of this layer, layer, punya thing. Now, what are those? What are the dots on top of this layer, layer, thingy on top of the nucleus? Start with letter R1. So, yes, very good. Those are ribosomes. Uh, usually, the question, they won't point like this one. Uh, usually, they will point on top here. Lah if they want to point ribosome, uh, but you just take note of it, like maybe there's another way to ask something, like maybe something like this, can. So ribosomes, function, uh, function later us. Okay, the next thing I want you to label is F. Okay, we so just skip to F. So F is the layer layer thing that the ribosome sits on top. So this ribosome is like pimples like that. So this layer thingy is like your face We have a lot of pimple, correct? So your face a lot of pimple. How does it feel? It will feel very rough. Lo. Yes, so this thing is called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Again, so the opposite of rough is smooth. Lo. So yes, we also have smooth 
uh, endoplasmic reticulum. How to differentiate? Uh, I'll tell you in a moment, don't worry. Uh, yes, definitely I'll teach you how to differentiate one, of course. So smooth, your, if your face is smooth, means there's no pimple. Lor. So here also said, ER that is smooth is basically ER that do not have ribosome, which is this one over here. Yeah, I know this structure looks a bit weird because this is a 3D structure. Later, I'll show you a 2D structure where my question usually will ask you what. Can I? So for that, that is basically the smooth ER or better to write smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, don't write uh, ER. ER is when we say the time we say ER easier. Lah. Now, uh, okay, I'll teach you in a moment how to differentiate. Ah. Don't worry. Ah. Now, I need to label one more thing. Then only we go to we will teach you how to differentiate. So you come to E D structure. So this structure E looks very similar to your smooth ER. A lot of you were confused, but yeah, so nice one, Georgina Rania. So by the way, these are called uh Gogi apparatus. So Gogi apparatus, you can see right, it's usually further away from the nucleus. So the ER, right, endoplasmic reticulum, is always near the nucleus, usually. Yeah. Gogi apparatus is further apart. And other than that, how to differentiate? Now, let me show you. Because usually, we seldom get 3D punya diagram. Right? Usually, like, you see a 2D punya diagram. Okay, so let's say I have a cell over here. And then this is the nucleus. Oops. Yeah. Uh, then on top of the nucleus, that you can see in your notes there, there's a lot of this layer, layer, punya thingy. Uh, usually they draw something like this. Okay. So whenever you have a lot of ribosomes of it, so these dots are just now we label the ribosomes. Ma. Right? So remember, it's like pimple. Face a lot of pimple is rough. Lor. So usually they will label something like this. They ask you, okay, what is this structure called? So got ribosome on top of it, got pimple. Ma. So this will be your rough endoplasmic reticulum. And sometimes this thing, maybe they will draw slightly longer a bit. And then there's another section of it that got no ribosome. One. So this is your smooth. Lor. Yeah, so question literally will show something like this. 2D Bunya diagram is basically like that. Then, the Gogi apparatus. Now, how to differentiate this thing? So, Gogi apparatus usually is further away from the nucleus. And their layers, right, are much more thicker. Uh, sometimes, even it looks like a Wi-Fi Bunya shape like that. And you can see in between them, right, don't have all these, like, sticks like that. You can see each of them are separate individually. So this is then your Gogi apparatus. Can So you just remember ER usually is closer to the nucleus and there's a lot of sticks in between it. Can I? So that's how we differentiate rough, smooth and also Gogi. Which is the which is very commonly asked you to label one. Okay, so once you get that already, now let's label uh their functions C, E, F, and also G. So now let's label C, F, and G first. Because this tree always is together one. Ah, they're like brother, like that. Always work together one. Ah, so it's like your chemistry, biophysics, these three signs always together. So it's like me, your physics teacher, Jung Hao, and also why don't your chemistry teacher? We always together, bro, for life. So number one, okay, we write this the function first. So ribosome, remember what does it do? It actually synthesizes something. It synthesizes protein. Yes, so synthesize means produce so i produce proteins and then this protein so you can label this as number one will come to the rough er now what does a rough er do with the protein it actually will remember not anyone it yes it will transport it 
So right after I produce your weight, it will be transported by the rough ER mainly to the Golgi apparatus. Can I? And then now the Golgi apparatus, the third and final part, it receives the protein already. Now, what is it going to do to the protein? It will do three things to the protein. So here it's like it will, number one, once it receives the protein, we will say it will modify the protein. Uh, no, not the transcript one. No, nothing to do with that. That one is another chapter. Don't worry. Not, so that, not that tough. I will modify it. And then I will package and transport the proteins. Now, where would I transport it? It depends on. Later, I will mention to you. Now, so what are these three things? How does this tree relate? So what does all these three functions actually mean? So now we come over here. Huh? Now, let me just give you an example. So it's something like this. So just remember your, 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 your ribosome, your rough ER, I just write RER, and your Golgi apparatus. So the sequence is like this. And so those who were my students last time, I told you like this ribosome is like factory at that. Where I produce the raw material. Okay, let's say ribosome is factory. This is like your lorry because I transport it and Golgi apparatus can be your bakery like that. Huh? So you can remember like this. So bakery is where I make bread and make cake, make cookies, for example. So to make all these kind of things, right, you need a common material, which is flour. So flour is a very general punya, uh, ingredient to make a lot, a lot kind of food. So my flour comes from the factory. Give me flour. Then this flour from the factory, from the factory, how does it come to my bakery? Obviously, there's a lorry that will help me transport the flour. Lor. Now, once you reach my bakery, now how is the bakery like the Golgi apparatus? Because once I receive the flour, let's say if I want to make cake, uh, I need to add uh, sugar, I need to add butter, and then ching chong, ching chong, ching chong, ping, become a cake. So I modify the flour. If I want to make bread, I change the recipe a bit. Also, I use flour, but I add different things inside it. All right? So that is what we call as we modify it. Uh, you add things inside, you modify it. Now, once you modify it already, let's say I got bread now. Now, once you have the bread, before you sell your bread, that can you give it there to your customer. Ma. You need to package it first. And then you package already. So let's say some people, they don't want to collect, they want to call grab, then you have to call grab to transport to them. Ma. So this is how it's like a bakery like that. Can understand that. Huh? So inside your cell, well now what does Golgi apparatus do with the protein? So a lot of Golgi apparatus transport it to where? Okay, I'll explain now. Ah, chill ah. Now, so uh in humans, right, or in animals itself, right, protein is like flour like that because it's a very common material that can be used to produce a lot of things. So in human, like protein can be used to produce like let's say enzymes to digest your food, produce antibodies, produce your hemoglobin, produce uh, hormones, many, many more. Now, let's say I want to produce enzyme, the most common thing. So first I need the protein come from here. All right, then, so the protein comes from the ribosome over here, right? So the rough ER then will transport it to the Golgi apparatus where the Golgi apparatus is going to modify the protein to let's say become an enzyme. So from here, I produce enzyme already. Ding, ding. Now, so then when I produce enzyme, I also need to package it. Why? Because I need to transport it to where? It depends on where I want to transport the enzyme. So sometimes the enzyme is maybe for the cell to use. 
they are transported over here for the cell to digest its own food. Though. But sometimes the enzyme is for your body to use. Let's say this is your body cell. I want to produce the enzyme for your stomach to digest food, for example. So then I might need to transport it out of the cell. So usually we will transport it out of the cell. Lah, because like your hormones, your antibody is for your body to use. So it needs to come out of the cell. So usually I transport it out of the cell. Okay, lah. Now, I want you to add here, add a few more things. So, from the rough ER, how do I transport the protein? Actually, I also need to package it one more one time first. Then only I can transport. It's just like the flour. Now, when you have flour already, right? How you transport to your bakery, you also need to package the flour into a packet first. Ma. Why can't you give the flour to custom to your to the shop like that one? Ma. So now I want you to add one more thing here. At the rough ER, before I transport the protein. I will need to package the protein into something called transport vesicles. Now, at this in first. So, that is how I transport it. So these proteins, right? I basically package them into a vesicle called a transport vesicle. Okay, then thing, this thing will come over here. Uh, if I package the flour into a packet, then I, and then I put inside the lorry and it comes over here. Now, same thing with the Golgi apparatus. After I modify it already into whatever thing I want to modify, let's say enzyme, I will need to package it one more time here. So here, I will package into another thing. Also a type of vesicle. So here I'll package into another kind of vesicle called secretory vesicle. Okay. So also from here, for the Gogi operator, let's say I got enzyme already. Same thing, I still need to package it into this thing here called a secretory vesicle. And then this thing will maybe carry out, carry it out of the cell. So why is it called secretory? Because I want to secrete it out of the cell. Secrete means I let it go out of the cell. Understand? So over here is just like from factory to, to your to your to your bakery, right? I transfer flour at the time I use lorry. But when I transport to people's house at the time, I use grab. Uh, I use motorbike. Ding ding. <laughs> so Different kind of transport, right? So you come to come to be to, to, to bakery at the time, I use lorry. Uh, go to people's house at the time, I use grab. So it's different modes of transport. That's why just now here is transport vesicle. Uh, when you come here, then I use secretory vesicle. Understand? So you can remember something like this. Oh? So these three very often questions that you ask together one. So later I will show you how questions were asked. Now, we just continue with the other functions first. So far, okay. Huh? Now, let's look at the smooth ER. So, smooth ER, a lot of you will mistaken it as a part of the three brothers. Some of you will think that smooth ER do I think is very close to this tree. But they are not related at all. Yeah, it's like an imposter like that. Uh, so, you got to find the imposter. So, it's just like uh, uh, AdMats is inside science stream Punya subject. Is, but it's not related, not really related to science. So it's kind of, but not really. So smooth ER, <laughs> we say here, what does it do? It does two things. Number one, it synthesizes lipid. Lipid means what? Lipid means oil, la, fats. La. So you just remember la, when you pour oil on table, that is very slippery, very smooth. La. That's why smooth ER does that. And one more, actually more important one, is carry out D. Toxification of drugs, which means it detox drugs like uh, dirty substances inside the cell, uh, whereby in your body is the liver, is your liver the is the one that carry all this process in your body. Uh, it detox drugs. Because some food that we eat might have a bit of poison drugs inside it. So your liver is the one to help you clean it. Now let's go back to D. We left out one here, D, just now. So D is another round thing. Obviously not related to C1. 
So what's the round, the round thing inside your cell? Remember now, start with letter L1. Yes, it's basically the stomach of the cell, the lysosome. So you remember it as the stomach. Lah. Why? Because it secretes a kind of enzyme called lysozyme. Just like in your body, there's many kind of enzyme to digest food, right? So the type of enzyme you have is lysozyme to digest food. Lah. And one more very special thing that it does, it also helps to break down other organelles. Now, because right, the organelles inside the cell are not like organs in your body. The brain that you're born with or the heart that you're born with, I will stick with you until the day you die. Correct? But in cells, right, their organelles only last for a certain period of time. After that certain period of time, right, this organelle have no function, cannot use it already. Then the cell have to produce a new one. Then what do you do with the old one? They will use the lysosome to digest it, break it law. Yeah, so correct. We will say it basically break down old and unwanted organelles. Can I? Now, we have a few more. H I J K L, a little bit only. Um, H, H, this one, easy law. I'm pointing at the membrane of the cell. Now remember, your form four already, don't ever write cell membrane, this word. We will say it's a plasma membrane. No more cell membrane. Huh? Ah. So does lysosome also break down bacteria? Bacteria is their food law. Because cell, they eat bacteria. Ma. So bacteria is basically their food. Look. Understand? Yeah, so yeah, it's their food. So plasma membrane, uh, remember this is chapter three one. It's basically like their door of the cell. So things will directly go in and out from the plasma membrane. Remember in chapter three? So basically we can say it controls the movement of substances moving in and out of the cell. Four more, I, now let me go to I, this one done, yeah, controls movement of substances, moving in and out of the cell. Now, I, I is uh, this thing, Whereby I give you enlarge here for you already one. Now this thing always come in pairs one. Ah, so recently remember this week we did cell division form four chapter six for my students. Ah. Okay, so what does this thing always come in pairs and always look like two bilo thin, two bottles, one, two container? Yes, these are your centrioles. Also, you can see it's something that you learned way back in chapter two. One. Ah, so we're going to make, then in chapter six only, we talk about its real function, right? So in chapter two, we just learned that it basically just, what does it do? Ah, chapter six, what do we learn? What does it form? It form cell division. Yes, the spindle fibers. So chapter two, also the same thing. It forms spindle fiber, but here we're not so detailed up during chapter two. Then we just say form spindle fiber cell division. Then how does it involve in cell division? The ones in chapter six. Oh. Then J. This thing that looks like the mitochondria, but it's not the mitochondria. It's also oval shaped one. Looks similar to the mitochondria. Some of you are even confused one. That is the chloroplast, ah, not chlorophyll. So chloroplast. It's basically like this, there's like pancakes stacking up in between, and in between the pancake, there's like lines joining together. So that is the chloroplast. Chlorophyll is something that's inside the chloroplast. So chlorophyll inside the chloroplast. And, uh, so this organelle is called chloroplast. We remember, fill is inside. 
So function is to basically absorb sunlight. Lah. What I use the sunlight for, for photosynthesis law to carry out photosynthesis. Can I? All right, almost there already. KL. Uh, K, 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 where's K? Uh, oh yeah, K is here. But then, K is what? <laughs> this one, form one, one. What's the outermost layer of the plant cell? So we have two kinds of cells here, right? One animal cell, so the plant cell. Yeah, this one is baby, uh, baby's uh, question, uh, cell wall. Uh. So what does cell wall do? Also, we learn in form one, one, maintain the shape of plant cell. And remember what is it made up of? This thing that is made up of is very important. It is made up of in chapter four from four. Got mentioned slightly about the one. Yes, very good. It's cellulose. Ta -da. So cellulose, it's basically a kind of carbohydrate, plant punya carbohydrate, which are basically fibers. Now these things are very hard. So sometimes you eat vegetables or fruits, there is thin, thin fibers inside. Every time we say fiber, fiber, ah, that's actually cellulose. It's something that's very hard and strong. That's so I can maintain the shape of the plant cell. Lo, L, last one already. L is, this is also something we learned since the last time. This big round thing inside plant cell. Animal cell also got, in form 4 you learn, right? animal cell actually also got vacuum. Some animal cell, but they are much smaller. In plants, they are big, lo. So what does vacuum do? It basically contains cell set, which is mainly water, of course, and you have certain dissolved minerals inside, like salt and maybe glucose inside. But mainly it's water, of course. Now, I need to add one more point over here. What else does this vacuum do? So when vacuum got water, right? <clears throat> uh, this vacuum also involved in help to maintain what we call as turgidity of cell. Because, yeah, keep the cell turgid very good, Wesley. So, because vacuum help to store water, ma. and if you remember, in chapter 3, when a, a plant cell that is fully filled with water, the vacuum will be very big and the cell will be turgid. So it's just like a water balloon filled with water. When you touch it at time, it's very like turgid, like very hard. Not hard, lah, but it's hard to compress. All right? So if the, if the cell don't have water, the vacuum will be very small. When the vacuum is small at time, you remember your chapter 3, the plasma membrane will pull inwards. So it's something that you can compress easily because it's less water. So that's the meaning of turgidity. I give it its shape. Now, if question ever asks, how does vacuum provide turgidity? You can add this point. So the vacuum, right, when there's water inside, right, they will exert pressure onto the plasma membrane and the plasma will push towards the cell wall. So this pressure is what we call as Tuger pressure. So you can say exert Tuger pressure. Okay, to push the plasma membrane towards the cell wall. So this is something that also question will ask, slightly harder when you have questions. That. So they will ask, how is the vacuum important for plant cells? Or how is the vacuum important for maintaining the shape of the cell? So you can see how oh, it first maintain turgidity. How exert a Tuger pressure? It's like the vacuum punya pressure is called Tuger pressure. Uh, then push the plasma membrane towards the cell wall. That's why it will be hard law. Okay. Uh. Sorry. Now, so basically these are all the organelles. So the one that is usually like to ask is the three brothers all remember, along with the smooth ER also, and mitochondria they like to ask the most. Right? This is the one on the top, so on the top. Now, 
So before we do a bit of questions, okay, we have a little bit more here. I'll go through this page a little bit and also this part here. So there are certain organelles, right, that have a double membrane. So these organelles, some people ask, who are the organelles that have double membrane? So it means they have two layers of membrane covering them. So it's actually your mitochondria along with your chloroplast. So the two overpunia organelles look alike one. And one more actually is your nucleus. Okay, huh? Now, once you know the organelles already, you know how to label, you know their function, that part actually is just a half of your problem only in chapter two usually. But what questions I'd like to ask also next is the density of certain organelles in a specific cell means, density means it's like the number of certain organelles in specific cell. So different cells in your body will have different amount of certain organelles because different cells have a different function. So they may require certain organelles more than the other. Understand? It's just like uh, different kind of shops do different kind of service. So they will, mean, they will need different kind of materials in their shop. For example, if you come to TTC tuition center, we give tuition. So obviously there will be a lot of paper to print your notes. There'll be a lot of table and chair for students to sit down. If you go to Mama, Mama is sell roti chanai, sell mainly goreng. So if you go there, obviously a lot of flour, a lot of sugar, a lot of uh, oil, for example, a lot of maggie also. Because they do different kind of business, so they have different material. Uh, you go Mama, they give you a lot of paper over there. Ma. So it's different. So for example, the first one we look at is mitochondria, the most commonly asked one, lah, this one, along with the next one also, the three brothers. Now let's look at mitochondria. So if question us, explain which cell has high density of mitochondria. So they want you to explain. So let's say if I say muscle, the most common. So I say muscle cell have a lot of mitochondria. One mark. Then if you ask me to explain, the explanation can be up to two marks. So how to explain these two marks? The first mark, you explain the function of the organelle first. So why muscle need a lot of mitochondria? Because it needs energy. Ah, so I state the function first. Okay? So, what's the energy for? Muscle need energy for muscle contraction. No? Or you can say for muscle to contract and relax also can. So we have three kind of muscle here. Later, I will show you how to differentiate these three kind of muscles. Now we, we remember the, the, the organelles first. Okay? So for example, questions I might ask, explain why sperm cell a lot of mitochondria too much. Say more, why I need a lot of mitochondria? Because I need energy. Oh. Uh, why I need energy for? Because I want to propel towards the ovum. Don't write the word swim. Uh. A lot of you like to write swim. Swim is not the correct word. Fish swim in water. Sperm is not swimming in water. It's propelling means it's moving inside a female body. Can I? Now, the one that is slightly not that direct one is called meristematic cells. Meristematic cells are found at the tip of the roots and at the tip of the shoots. So basically something like this. So a plant, something like this. This here is the tip of the shoot. So entire part here we call it the shoot and the root. So tip of root, tip of shoot. Now, the cells over here we call meristematic cells. Oops, MC. These cells, when the plant is still young that time, the meristematic cell mainly carries out cell division. Why? Because if I have more cells, then the plant can slowly grow. Because I want to grow up, get sunlight. Roots also the same. Meristematic cells over here also carry out a lot of cell division. So more cells I produce, more longer my roots can grow. Understand? So to carry out cell division, you need energy. You need to hurry. Come on like that. So you need energy. 
Same thing for what? For cell division. Can? Oh. Okay. Now, uh, a lot of you will say, oh, a lot of centrile because centrile for cell division. So no, don't write that. Don't ever say a lot of centrioles here because I forgot to mention to you just now, plant cells do not have centrioles to produce spindle fiber. In plant cells, spindle fiber is directly produced in the cytoplasm. So you can write here to remake, you remind yourself, only in animal cells. Understand? Can? Okay, ah. Uh. Right. So that's mitochondria. Now the next one, very commonly asked one. So usually question is ask mitochondria or these three things. Ribosome, RAF, ER, Golgi apparatus. It's not our three brothers. Now, just remember, in what kind of cells in human will you see these three organelles are basically cells, means part of your body that mainly produces things that is made up of protein. Understand? More commonly, your digestive organs because digestive organ produce digestive enzyme which is made of protein so usually question like to ask uh, digestive organ no? for example you can see pancreatic cells the cells in the pancreas uh, slivery glands your mouth epithelial cells in the intestine which is basically your small intestine so like test you all a bit last time you all learned one. Remember or not? Slivery glands. Your sliver also could digest food. Or not. What's enzyme inside your sliver? Remember or not this one? In your mouth, got what kind of enzyme inside your sliver? Yes, you remember we call it the salivary. Salivary amylase. And pancreas. Anyone remember? Okay, pancreas, the answer you learned last time, in form 4, the name will change a bit already. So in form 4, we learned it as L A T LAT, which is lipase, amylase. Okay, lipase, amylase, maybe it's still the same, but T is a bit different. T is called trypsin. Last time, we all learned it as protease one. Yeah, so remember, these enzymes is secreted into your duodenum one to digest food. So if I want to produce enzyme, I need the three things off. And intestine, you basically have also, you have uh, other kind of enzyme. Okay, this one is important. So, why I need these three things? Because ribosomes synthesize protein. Rough ER help me to transport the protein to the Golgi apparatus. And the Golgi apparatus help me to modify the protein into enzymes. Also, even hormones, because your pancreas also produce hormones, but mainly we say enzymes. Oh. Can? So usually question, remember, like ask digestive organ. So if you say digestive organ, punya cell, uh, what, what kind of organelle? So just remember this tree, because I want to produce protein, transport protein, modify the protein to become enzyme. Now the next one, other than this tree, we also have something called goblet cells, or sometimes they also they will refer it to mucus cells which are cells that secrete mucus. Yeah, for this one, I, it's spelled M-U-C-U-S, but the cell is spelled as M-U-C-O-U-S, a bit weird, a bit different. So usually, which part of your body mucus? Your respiratory tract, your trachea. That's why in your nose, you've got mucus because the mucus comes from your trachea, sort of. And your digestive tract, your mouth, esophagus, small intestine, all also got mucus so that you swallow food at time can be easier less friction. So here, you also have mucus cells or goblet cells to secrete mucus. So mucus is also made up of protein. And now, then the next two basically very easy. So chloroplast basically is found in plant cells, but not all plant cells have chloroplast. Chloroplast mainly found in these two cells. This is the leaf, by the way, if you don't know what this. So chloroplast mainly found in the palisade mesophyll and the spongy mesophyll. So because these are the two main parts that carry out photosynthesis except a leaf. And the last one, smooth ER, are usually found in your liver cells because it is used to carry out detoxification of drugs. So inside the cells, you need a lot of smooth ER to help you detox 
Can? Okay. Huh? All right. So if you can, organelles, basically, this is what you need to know. Law. So you need to know function, label, and which kind of cell have which kind of organelle. Now, let's do a big question. Uh, we go to behind, if you have the notes. You look at page uh, 22. Come 22, question one. Now, try to label this on your own first. Give you one minute. Come, try to look at yourself. Okay, I want to go toilet a while first. Okay, come. Let's go. <clears throat> So you can see, right, the diagram over here, like I showed you in front law, a 2D diagram is what question usually will show you. So labeling very simple on the structures M, N, O, P, Q. So M pointing at this one, which are no problem, right? Outer layer, that's the plasma membrane. Ah, okay, this one don't need to think already. Then straight away come to N. Ah, so you see N layer, layer thingy, further away from the nucleus and inside don't have sticks. So that is your... See, look a bit like Wi-Fi shape like that. Ah, that is your. Remember? Yes, Gogi. Apparatus. Oh. Ah. Label thing, labeling organelles is one of the most basic thing lah, in your first term. Uh, o. O is pointing at... Uh, well, very hard to see this one. Okay, I think it is pointing at the ribosome, ah, this one. The dots, because usually if they want to label rough ER, they will find something like this. Yeah, so we will assume this is the ribosome. Then P, the whole round thing in the center. Wait, wait uh, uh, R. Let me check. Uh, R is actually pointing at the cytoplasm. R is actually pointing at the cytoplasm. Yeah, a bit confusing. R is actually cytoplasm. Yeah. Can I, sorry, this is a bit confusing, but R is actually referring to the cytoplasm. The whole thing. Okay. And then P, this one easy law, the nucleus. Q, you can see this one inside is zigzag, zigzag like this one. So that's actually the mitochondria. If you cannot, if you're not sure is it mitochondria or, or chloroplast, you can see this is animal cell. So definitely it's not chloroplast. That's a mitochondria. Now, state the function of P. So P. One mark, this one, easy on uh, nucleus, carry out, control all activity of cells. Simple, control all activity of cells. And then they say, now, what is the chemical component in P that carries out the function? So there's one chemical component inside your nucleus. What is that chemical component? No, not ATP. ATP is not inside nucleus. It's, yes, DNA. Remember, just like we mentioned, contains DNA, store jelly information. Yeah, so DNA is a kind of a chemical compound, basically. It's a nucleic acid. If you already learned chapter four. Yes, you can write DNA in exam. You don't have to write the full name. You can write DNA. So have to write deoxyribonucleic acid. C1, if this cell is found in the pancreas, two organelles found abundantly in the organelles. So 
You remember what we mentioned about this just now? Pancreas, what organ is this? It's a digestive organ. Ma. Ah, so digestive organ should have what kind of organ now? Yes, the ribosome, uh, the rough ER, the three brothers, basically. Now, I would prefer you all to write the first and the last ribosome, Golgi apparatus. First and last. Why? Because the next point, usually when they ask you to name already, they will ask you to explain. So explain usually is two marks, not one mark, that's simple. So. I just explained why I need ribosome because I need to synthesize protein. No? Then the Gogi apparatus. Do then modify. See, this is one mark, one mark. Only you have to write so much. Modify the proteins to produce digestive enzyme. Okay, huh? Now, name two structures present in the palisade but absent in animal cells. Yes. Wesley, what's pro uh, what happened? Any problem? Can I really copy you finish your video right here? Can you write another organelle besides ribosome? Uh, there's only three law pancreas, ribosome, Golgi, or the rough ER law. These three only. Like I say, I prefer to write the first and the last ribosome and Golgi. So besides ribosome, if you ribosome, you can write rough ER. Uh, but you cannot write other city. Lah. Can, uh, digestive organ, high number, abundantly means, abundant means banyak, a lot. So it's this three. Yeah. So two structures present in palisade. So palisade is not the leaf punya cell, right? Absent in animal cell. So number one, obviously, is chloroplast. Definitely. And what else do plant punya cells have that animal cells don't have? Yellow, cell wall, easy, uh, this one. Simple as that. Um, come, let's try another one. Can? So let's look at question two. Will vacuum be accepted? Um, you can write vacuum, but try to include the word large vacuum. Uh, so I will, to be safe, I will not use vacuum lah, because in form four, we do mention that certain animal cells have vacuum. So it's better not to write vacuum. It's better to write for plus cell wall, the more obvious ones. Yeah. <laughs> Come into your questions too now. Yeah, so, uh, this question is quite similar one. Okay, uh, so they ask you to state one function of chromosomes. So chromosomes are these things that are found in the cell. So again, for my students, we just learned this in cell division, right? Chromosome is basically for what inside you have genetic information, right? You have DNA. So you either say, can say contain DNA or contain genetic information also, Bole. Because genetic information is inside the DNA. Okay, so we say to contain or to store. So they want you to name two enzymes secreted by the pancreatic cell. So pancreatic cell, pancreasma, remember LAT law. So you can see, EPase or amylase or trypsin.
Next, what will happen to the production of extracellular enzymes if P and Q are absent? So it's the same thing as just now, right? If you don't have Q, don't have P. So basically, no Q, no factory, no flour, no protein, no? Right? So we can say number one, without Q, protein cannot be synthesized. No? Now, but for P part, the Golgi and this one can see, right? This is the Golgi, right? Very obvious. Wi-Fi shape further away from the nucleus. So four marks, which means you need three marks to explain for the Golgi apparatus. Q ribosome. If they point at this, right, we always assume ribosome. Lah. And unless they point at this, then rough ER. And yeah, this is a bit uh confusing punya part question. They always point at that and it's very hard to see one. Right? So I believe in exam questions, they will make it more clearer. Lah. If they want rough ER, they will point something like this. So um so you need three marks for the Golgi apparatus, right? So P. So you can use the tree function to explain also if no Golgi apparatus, first you are unable to modify the protein into enzyme. So you can say no protein cannot be modified into enzymes. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering what is extracellular enzymes, it just means enzymes that function outside cell. Extra is out, cell is outside cell. Okay, so basically the cell, the enzyme for your for your for your for your body to digest food. Right? And I just continue. Uh, and then uh enzymes cannot be packaged also. Uh? So remember, I package into what? Into the secretory vesicle we mentioned just now. Cannot be packaged into secretory vesicle and transported out of the cell. So you can see I mentioned all the three functions of the, the Golgi apparatus. Sorry, my nose is very itchy. You can see me scratching my nose. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah, you can see you have uh, modify, package, transport. So, secretory vesicles, this one, by the way, it's this one here. Lo. You can see ma? this round thing, they are carrying the enzymes out of the cell. And this is the transport vesicle from rough ER to Golgi apparatus, what? P is Golgi apparatus. P is Golgi apparatus, or oh. so you do the three things on, ma. modify, package, transport. Look like Wi-Fi shape further away from nucleus on. And ah. Uh, now B1. Name this organelle. So what is this organelle? Now, they also say this organelle also found in pancreatic cell. Yeah, even though this organelle is not the three brothers, but sometimes question will ask this one. But let's say if question asks what is found in body pancreatic cell, we stick to the three cannot. So sometimes you will mention also got this organelle, which is actually mitochondria. Can so why I need low mitochondria? So they say why the okay before they okay we still skip this one first. Why pancreatic cell has a large number of this organ? Yeah, why do I need low mitochondria? Why besides the three brothers to tr produce enzyme? Why do I need a lot of mitochondria? Because I need energy to transport the enzymes out of the cell. When I transport it out, the time I need energy. So that's why you also need mitochondria. But 
remember, if question asks, what is the organelle found abundantly in pancreas, we always stick to the original tree. Yeah, because I scared sometimes the question, your teacher, right, don't really accept this one. But to be exact, mitochondria also one of the organelles can be found a lot inside pancreatic cell. So why I need a large number? So remember, first mention the function first, right? Because I want to generate energy. So what's the energy for? To basically transport the enzymes out of cell. And then look at, look at this question. Now this question, slightly high IQ a bit, uh, you think a bit. So as you know, mitochondria, inside is curl, 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 fold, 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 fold one. Ma. So the question you ask, why the inner membrane of this organelle has many foldings? Now, let me give you a hint. It's something like your small intestine. So your small intestine also fold many times one. Ma. Why your small intestine is not like straight away one line down the center? Why want to fold so many times? Yes, very good. Uh, and Georgina is because I want to produce large surface area. Okay, to increase the surface area. So, why on increase surface area? So, for what? So, let's say for intestine, it's for absorption. Or your intestine longer, I can absorb more nutrients from food. Rather, when your if your intestine is like one thing, like this, rather than like this, the food go down very fast. It means you cannot absorb a lot of food. But for here, what's the large surface area for? It's for it to carry out cellular respiration, no? Produce more energy, yeah. So to produce energy, you need to carry out cellular respiration. So we mentioned the process first. Yeah, because if it's like this only, you carry out punya respiration very small surface area only. Uh, if like this, you can carry out here, 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 a lot. Yeah, so you can say to increase the rates of cellular respiration to produce more energy. Cannot. Now, so uh, now I want to try this one last one. Then we go back in front to look at the next topic, which is uh, do, 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 do I have the question here? Uh, yeah, I don't have the question here. Da, 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 da. Okay, now my yeah, one important one actually. Now that one, if you see, we go back in front. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, let's go in front the uh, notes. The next thing we're going to go through is... Uh, okay, we skip this one a while first. Now, I want you to come to here. Page 19. Living process in multicellular organism. So over here, what you need to know is something called the cell organization. Whereby... You need to know how the cell slowly form tissue, organ, system, then organism. So one of the most basic things you need to know here like, is the definition of tissue, organ, especially these two. And sometimes question might ask system, like, but mainly tissue and organ. So cells, if they ask definition, is the basic unit of life. There's note in the book. No, there's no note. You're supposed to write in. Now we're going to write together. Like, it's meant to be empty though, yes. So we're going to write together, of course. So uh, 
uh, what really are, yeah. So if they ask what is the function of cell, cell is the basic unit of life. So all human being, all living things begin as a cell first. They only the cell divide, divide, form tissue, organ, and so on. Okay. So for tissue, when cell become tissue, they time they will question us. Explain what is a tissue, or explain how tissue is formed. So you can say tissue is made up of cells, right? But you cannot just say made up of cells, you must say made up of similar cells. So all the cells inside here are very much the same, exactly the same or very similar. Okay, you can say it's made of similar cells that you can say work together. <laughs> Second function, to carry out specific function. Okay, you copy this first. Now, let's look at the organ now. So organ, tissues eventually will form organ. So now they say they ask, explain what is an organ? Or explain how this organ is formed. So stomach, this organ, organ now we know is made of tissues. Again, you cannot just say made of tissues. You have to say made up of different tissues. So one organ has more than one tissues. Which we also can say two carry out a specific function. So for example, uh, digestive organ is a very classic example. So inside this organ, there is more than one tissue. For example, you have epithelial tissue, which is the surface punya tissue to help you secrete enzyme hydrochloric acid. You also have smooth muscle tissue, which help you to carry out peristalsis one. Ha, help your stomach to grow, grow like that, move one. Understand? So smooth, sorry, smooth muscle tissue. Understand? Huh? So this example of one organ definitely have more than one tissue. Now, after that, all these organs will combine to form a system. So stomach, liver, small intestine, pancreas, all of this becomes a digestive system, right? So if they ask you, what is a system? So system is two marks or so long, made up of, you can say, several organs. Whereby, Organs now we don't say specific function already. You can say which carry out a living process. So just now was specific function, specific function. Now it's living process. So living process is uh different organs actually also can lah. so i would say here there's a few organs one system definitely have more than one organs so what you mean by living process for example digestive system carries out digestion this process to keep you alive or oh. respiratory system is respiration or oh. excretory system excretion or oh. ah, all these system combines it will form a multicellular organism a human for example is that clear yeah so now, then, right, you can see there are many, there are different, different kinds of tissues here that you must know. Now, I won't go through these tissues already. You simply go through the notes over here. So we have epithelial tissue, which is like the skin, pinea tissue, surface, pinea tissue. So not actually your skin only have epithelial, but your organs also have skin. Yeah, so look at yourself. Then you have muscle tissue, connective tissue, which are tissues that are found in between your bones, and also you have blood, bones, adipose. Adipose is fat, basically. So just look through yourself now. I'll go through slightly this muscle tissue because these three look very similar. 
So we have three kinds of muscle cells forming three kinds of muscle tissue. So cardiac and skeletal. Now let's look at these two first. Skeletal basically are muscle attached to your skeleton. Skeletal. Ma. So basically are all your meat. Okay, your show biceps, show tricep, all these, your hands, legs, muscle are all skeletal muscle. Cardiac muscle is basically found in your heart. <laughs> cardiac ma. Cardiac means heart. So these two looks quite similar. So number one, both of them are something like sticks like that. Like branches like that. Right? But for cardiac, this branch is slightly different. This stick, right, you can see branches out, like, like three branches, and then you can see it branch out like that one. Uh, means from like this, suddenly it will branch out, become like two like that. So that will be cardiac muscle. So that's how you see the difference. Understand? So skeletal muscle is actually the only voluntary muscle in your body. It means the only muscle that you can uh, willingly control like all this, you can control as you wish. Cardiac muscle, your heart pumping is something you cannot control. Of course, you cannot control your heart, correct? Uh, smooth muscle also something you cannot control because smooth muscle involved in peristalsis. When you swallow your food at time, remember the action that help you push, whoops, help you push the food down, your esophagus, even your stomach, small intestine, also the same, the peristalsis. Yeah, so that's why we mentioned here, remember the smooth muscle that is involuntary. Again, okay, ha. Huh? Yeah, so for this one, now we just do a quick question. So plant kunya, you go through yourself. We don't have time to go through plants already. So I'll show you, for example, what kind of question you ask for this kind of part. So uh, something like on page 34, this one. Question seven. Oh, you haven't finished writing. Sorry, sorry. Page 19. Uh, come, come, come. Right. Anna. Yeah, when you're done, we look at just now the question there. All right. Come. So, page 34. He's saying... Name the level two in the cell organization. So level two cell forms tissue. Though. So that's what they mean by name level two. So they say the cell undergoes process X to become specific cells that will perform a specific function. Name the process. So, uh, this was something I didn't mention. Uh, but what is the process of cell forming tissue? I don't remember. Uh, <clears throat> this one is actually, we call it as cell special specialization. Not cell division. Uh. So, it's is the process of cells stick together to form a tissue. For example, over here, just now in front, the process of, let's say, epithelial cell to form epithelial tissue, a process to to stick together is called cell specialization. That's how from one cell, it can stick together to form tissue. Yes, cell may not have the cell division to form a lot of cell, but once I form a lot of cell, how they stick together? So stick together, cell differentiation. Cells, uh, cell division, sorry, cell specialization. What's the difference between cell specialization and cell division? Now, cell division is just a process of one cell. Like I said, oh, just only become many, many kind of, many, many cells. Then for these cells to stick together to form a tissue, I undergo cell specialization. So this one was cell division just now, right? So to stick together, I undergo cell specialization to stick together to form a tissue. Do you understand? And also that's cell specialization. Cell division is one become two, two become four. Specialization, I stick together, something like that. 
two other examples of level three in cell organization involved in a human digestive system. So after tissue already is organ, right? So they want two other examples. So here already we have pancreas. So other example, stomach, small intestine, large intestine. You can say all this, oh. Yeah, do the is intestine. Nah. So do is part of the small intestine. So we say small intestine, large intestine, liver. Ah, there were so many over here. Okay, Cindy, right? Come, let's look at this one. They say diagram shows a part of cell organization in humans. So we have another type of cell organization. So you can see the cell P, tissue P, organ R. Now what is cell P? So this one, this one I didn't go in front, but go through in front, but you can see eventually I formed this organ. What organ is this you can see? Now? This is basically the skin. All right. So yes, this cell is not epidermis. We call it epithelial cell to be precise. Epidermis, epidermal cell are usually used for plant one, a bit different than name. So what is the function of cell P? So human punya, basically your skin cell. So this cell eventually form this organ. So it's basically, if you say, these cells, like the cells inside your skin, ding, 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 what is it for? So basically, it's to act as like a protective barrier like that. Law. Don't let things go inside your body. Because remember, your epithelial cell in your skin is actually very thick. One. Uh, so you can say to act as a protective barrier to prevent entry of micro organism explain how organ R is formed so they ask how this organ is formed so whenever they ask how a certain organ is formed remember Basically, you just use the definition to help you answer. <laughs> Understand? So how an organ is formed? So an organ is made up of different tissues. So how is it formed? Uh? So this just like asking, how do I form a bread? Bread is formed from flour, formed from butter. So how does this organ form? It is formed, you can say it is made up of, remember, uh, different tissues. Then you can see which carries out a specific function. You write this too, it's good enough for two marks already. So one function of organ R in human, so skin, so this kind of question, so they might ask, one, they ask like, what function of this organ is. So uh, skin, what does skin do? Skin basically is for... Okay, besides protect, uh, uh, the, the easy one, you can also mention, yes, very good. You can say body temperature. It also helps to regulate your body temperature. Because your skin can help you sweat, your skin got hair, your skin got uh, blood vessels, all these kind of things, they help you control your body temperature. Something you learned before last time, in Form 4 next time, so you're going to learn more. How does it control your body temperature? You also, also can say helps to excrete urea because you sweat that time, you 
you execute urea inside it. So you also can mention that. Okay. Can I? Yeah. So that is tissue organization part that I will do. So you can see this is an example of the three muscle tissue. You can see it's now skeletal, cardiac, smooth. Can. Yeah. So try to do that yourself. So that's it. That's it for uh, this organization part. Lo. Can I? Now, uh, chapter three, this one I won't really go through in today's seminar. All right, so for chapter three, like for my students, actually 3.1 recently we got revised already. Uh, yeah, but for those who are not my students, right, okay, uh, actually inside my YouTube channel, you can find that I already got, I actually got do uh, 3.1 specific, exactly like this part. I actually got to go through it. You can uh, go and look at it if you're interested. Uh, for now, uh, I think I will do this part now. Lah. Living process in unicellular organism. Uh, process, you know, here's living process. So there are two unicellular organisms here that we will learn, which is amoeba, paramecium. But questions you usually like to ask amoeba. So I'll focus more on amoeba lah, for today. So amoeba, what do you mean by living process in amoeba? So they are a living organism as well but they are unicellular, means they live on their own. So since they're a living organism, right, they basically do things that human also does to keep ourselves alive. For example, they also eat, they reproduce, they move, they respond, they can excrete just like human. So usually questions like to ask this one, you can see there's a process you need to explain, question like to ask reproduction, and also excretion. So now let's look at the labeling first. Yeah, there are parts here that you must know how to label. So as you can see, bio, right? A lot of times, label, 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 very important one. Come, let's look at um, A. Yeah. So you can see, okay, before you get A, right? In these cells, you can see there are one, two, three round structures over here. So how am I going to differentiate which is which? So we can start from C first, actually. No vacuum over here. The vacuum here got a specific name one. So anyways, we start from C first. So the black color thing, right? This one. This is the most easiest one. Uh, this one is the nucleus law. Then you can see you have two other round things here. This one, the white color one. And this one, you got one cockroach inside one. Uh, okay, we start with the white A first, white color one. What's this vacuum called? Yes, it's a vacuum, but there's a name for it. Yes, it's called a contractor vacuum. Now, why is it white color? Because there's water inside. So contractor vacuum have something related to water. So we will look at it in a while. Now, what about this one? I got cockroach inside one. Yeah, it's not cockroach, actually. Actually, they're meant to draw a bacteria, something like that. Or something draw like a cockroach. So basically, it's the food, it's food, vacuum, it is food. Yeah, so this is just called a food vacuum. Not mitochondria. Huh? No, 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 no. It's a food vacuum. It contains food inside. And then B and D. So B is nothing much. Huh? This is just a plasma membrane. And D, this is the, it's hand. So you can see, right, for usually cells or right, unicellular organism, right, they don't have their own hands and legs. So basically, they use their plasma membrane and cytoplasm to form their hands to help them eat, to help them move, for example. Yeah, so these are called the soda podium. Can I? No. Then let's come to the first process. Uh, the process that they could ask you to explain up to three to four marks. One, feeding, how they eat. So remember, their feeding process is called phago 
cytosis. So actually most cells eat using this method called phagocytosis. Is sodopodium cytoplasm? No, it's not. So you can see that this cell, this amoeba, we eat food at a time, you can see these two things come out like that. So they are pointing at this, these two parts, this part. Uh, so when I form these two hand thingy to like eat food at a time, right, this is called the, cyto, the pseudopodium. It's not the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is inside the pseudopodium. Okay, uh, so uh, come. How to explain this process? Phagocytosis. So cytosis means I eat law. Suddenly I eat like that. So no, actually not phag cytosis. Phago means I eat. Um, first process, the first process, but the first, so usually we use keywords lah to remember the process. So first you can see when I eat the food at the time, right, the hand come out. Ah, so I remember it. I need to mention the soda podium. Soda podium. <laughs> After when I eat the food already, you can see for something that forms around the food. Uh, so that is actually the food vacuum. Okay, uh, and then um then you can see there's a blue color thing that was stick to the food vacuum. Now, any idea what is this or not? Okay, I give you a hint. This blue color thing right, is here to digest the food inside the food vacuum. So just now, what do we learn? What do I need to digest food? No, not contractile vacuum. Digest food, nothing to do with contractile vacuum. Is the lysosome. Yes, in front one just now. What organelle is the lysosome? So basically, to digest food, lysosome secretes the enzyme, lysozyme. Okay, uh, and then finally, the last part, I will write it as cytoplasm because nutrients that is being digested from the food goes into the cytoplasm. Can? Okay? Yeah, so here, let's just write the points, the explanation. So number one, I use soda podium, eat food, right? So I can say the amoeba, sp dot. Yeah, you write sp dot because amoeba is a scientific name. So sp dot stands for a species, amoeba species. It extends the soda podium. And then I eat the food, right? We said up, chop, eat like that. So we say and engulf its food. Then next, a food vacuum then forms inside the food. Right, so we just say long inside the amoeba. We just have to say foot vacuum forms around the foot. And then number three, uh, the lysosome, right? You can see the lysosome come and stick the full vacuum. Uh. So that's what we're going to mention at exactly. Lo. The lysosome, then you can just straight say attaches to foot vacuum. And then I secrete the lysosome, oh. so you can say oh. lysosome secretes 
the lysozyme. into food vacuum. And then lastly, uh, okay, so we like to send in the food vacuum to digest the food, so we left out here to digest the food. So once I digest the food already, I need to absorb the nutrients. Just like in, in humans, so the same, you digest food already, it's more interesting, absorb the nutrients. So here, the nutrients actually is being absorbed into the cytoplasm. So you just have to say then, nutrients is absorbed into cytoplasm. Now, actually, usually, right, you write, you write one, two, three, four, it's already more than enough already. Because I already explained how I eat and how I digest the food already. Usually, that's what question one when they ask phagocytosis. So, usually, the last one is actually not important already. So, unless the question asks like five, six months, then you have to write until the end. So, actually, you still have one more point because once you absorb the nutrients already, you can see the amoeba like shit the food out. So, the process of shitting is very simple. It's simple. It's just like I release it out for me. Just like I move away and release the food out. Uh, so you just have to say amoeba. You can say then releases the undigested food. Okay, see so the undigested food is then le left behind also can. <sighs> So other than that, feeding is one of the most important. I remember the process, phagocytosis. I use soda podium, eat, then got food vacuum form. The lysosome comes, secrete the lysozyme inside, digest food, and then the nutrients go into cytoplasm. Very easy only actually. Now the next one, let's look at reproduction. So amoeba, how does it reproduce? You remember there's two methods. But both methods are asexual. Asexual means I do it by myself. So I reproduce asexually by binary fission. Remember the process of just one splitting into two. But I only uh, uh, amoeba only reproduce by binary fission in favorable condition. Means condition that is suitable for the suitable as in temperature, not too hot, no light. They don't like light. Uh, not too dry because they live in water and not acidic. So remember, lah, they live in fresh water pond. So the water must be just right, not too hot, not too acidic. And then uh, when environment is not favorable, so let's say when the surrounding is the opposite now, very hot, not enough water, too acidic, they will reproduce by forming spores. So spores are like their eggs like that. So these spores will like wait until the condition is suitable, then they, they, they come out again. No? They undergo meiosis or mitosis, definitely it's mitosis. Lah. A section, no meiosis one. It's definitely mitosis. Because it's just a simple cell division process, one becomes two. <laughs> So no meiosis in the unicellular organism is all mitosis one. Because no sperm, no ovum involved. Now let's see if we go to the last one here, excretion. So excretion here, the process is known as osmoregulation. So osmo means water, regulate means control. So, so sometimes question, instead of saying excretion, right, they might ask, uh, explain the osmoregulation process in amoeba. So when they're asking about that, it's 
basically asking about the food, the contractile vacuum. So like I said, contractile vacuum is something to do with controlling water in duct. So remember, amoeba lives in fresh water, which means outside is always hypotonic, means a lot of water outside. So water will definitely keep on diffusing into the amoeba. So which means there's going to be a lot of excess water. So contractile vacuum, remember, is like your bladder like that, uh, the, 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 the organ that store your urine. So when you drink a lot of water, obviously your bladder will expand. So when you expand, you're full already, what happened? You go to the toilet, and then this bladder will contract, shrink, and your pee will come out. So this contractile vacuum is exactly the same. So if too much water go into the amoeba, water will first enter the cytoplasm, of course. And all this excess water will go into the contractile vacuum. So when this contractile vacuum becomes too big, it will just contract. This is called contractile vacuum because it contracts and the water push or come out. So you just have to say, uh, actually, usually we start from here. The first part just telling you water diffuses into the amoeba through the plasma membrane, nothing much. So if they explain, if they ask you to explain osmotic radiation, we start from point number two actually. Excess water in the cytoplasm diffuses into the contractile vacuum. Like I show you just now, water goes into contractile vacuum. So this contractile vacuum will expand, expand, expand. Once I reach maximum size, so I, when I you have to say when I enlarge to maximum size, just like with your bladder full already, you go pee. So this thing will contract and expel the excess water. To surround it, expel means I release the excess water. To surrounding. Understand? Okay, ma? Yeah. So that is how a P law basically can. So paramecium, you go through yourself because we don't have time to go through that. We do one question straight away, one amoeba question, then I think that will be it already. So question, I say usually go for amoeba one. Right? Apparently, they like to ask amoeba more. Paramecium, we don't really like see questions a lot. But I got prepared question behind that. Like, you can try to look it at yourself. Uh, then let's look at question nine. Page 37. So amoeba here. Uh, so they ask here, state the level of cell organization of amoeba. So level of cell organization means cell tissue organ. So amoeba definitely is a cell law. And then what is structure M? So this one, white color one. Ah, what's this one? No, white color one is not food vacuum. Food vacuum got food inside one. See, food vacuum already labeled here already. Uh, white color one is what? White color is water. Ah, so for food one, they will show you. See, this one got food inside one. Okay, no? So white color, no food. Ma. So the one is contractile vacuum. Then, then B1, explain why water content in M increases when the amoeba SP is in fresh water pot. Uh, so yeah, why does it increase when it, I'm in fresh water pot? So this one, you got to use a little bit of chapter three to answer. So like I said, fresh water is high pole. Means there's a lot, there's high water content outside. So the water will force into the cell. Yeah, so you can start by saying the fresh water pond is hypotonic towards the amoeba. So therefore. Water, you can say, uh, 
water yeah will diffuse into the amoeba as we dot continuously. So the you can see lot excess water in the cytoplasm then will diffuse into the contractile vacuola, which is M. So that's how I expand because it's got too much water. Fresh water pond FWP, already say fresh water pond. And then basically B2 is continuous, continue this question over here. What they say, what is the role of M in controlling the water balance in amoeba as we talk? So basically, you can start with this point. You actually can say this one. Excess water in the cytoplasm diffuses into the contractile vacuum. Can number one, and then you just have to continue. Lah. Then you have to say, I will expand. Ma. So I will expand, you must say, until maximum size. So you must say, when contractile vacuum, which is the M. Expand to maximum size. You can see it will contract because contract out. So it will contract and squeeze the water out. So it will contract and expel water to surrounding. So then sometimes questions always have to ask this question as well. Very common in amoeba as well. So you say, if a student now plays amoeba in seawater, predict what happens to the amoeba, explain your answer. So seawater is opposite of fresh water, right? Whereby seawater has a lot of salt. So seawater is the opposite. It's now hyper. Sonic. So something also learned in chapter three. But so remember, hypo is something that I have more water, less solute. It's less salt. Like in this case, hyper is the opposite. I have less water, more solute. So which means now, remember, water always will go from more water to less water, hypo to hyper. So if outside now is seawater, outside now is hyper already. So water is going to come out. So if water come out, there's no excess water left inside your amoeba already. Ma. It's just like if you don't drink water, you eat a lot of salt, there will not be water in your body and there won't be excess water going, filling up your bladder. Correct? So which means there will be no water going into the contractile vacuum. Don't have. So which means the prediction here is that your contractile vacuum will remain the same size. Understand? Okay. So prediction, you can say the contractile vacuum remains same size. It won't become smaller. It's just like your bladder. If you don't pee, will your bladder shrink or not? No, your bladder will just remain the original size. 
That means if you don't, if you don't drink water, your bladder will remain same size. Ma. Your bladder suddenly becomes small like that. Ma. So we will say it will remain the same size. Uh, if you've got water, then only your bladder expands. Same with the concordial vacuum. So we say it remain the same size. Why? Animal plant cell don't have contractile vacuum one because animal and plant cell is not a unicellular. There is no excess water going to, it doesn't live on its own. When, you, when your body got excess water, you urine, your kidney help you to excrete excess water. So because this kind of cell, they live on their own. So they need an organ to help them excrete water. So animal cell and plant cell is not the same as amoeba paramecium. Amoeba paramecium, they are unicellular. Remember, they live on their own. So contractile vacuum is like their kidney like that. Because for ourselves, we don't need contractile vacuum because you have a kidney to expel excess water from your body. Yeah, so it's not the same. Animal and plant cell, no, it's different. So for that, it doesn't apply. It doesn't apply for those kind of cells. So explanation, like I say, because the seawater is hypertonic towards uh, animal cell, this is amoeba, sp dot. So hence water diffuses out of amoeba. Law. And therefore, you can say oh, no excess water diffuses into the contractile vacuum. So question C, come on, first, uh, last one. Uh, they say here, what happens during stage P and Q? So they tell you this is a phagocytosis, I mark to near process, but they only want P and Q. So P, you can see from here, I use soda, put them in, and here is where I start to form the food vacuum. Yeah, so we can start from the food vacuum part, three marks, right? So food vacuum, form, and then remember, there's supposed to be a lysosome. They didn't mention here. Yeah, like what got lysosome in labor? Lysosome will attach to it. You can see, oh, lysosome. You remember, oh, attach to your foot vacuum and secrete lysozyme to digest the food. So for this one, since they want P and Q, so you actually can skip the nutrients diffuse into cytoplasm part because Q is showing you that I release the undigested food. Mark. So you can still skip to the Q there, whereby you can say undigested food is then released by the amoeba. Can? Okay, Ma. So that is it. I think that's it for today. In front, we have chapter one. Uh, for actually two hours, you cannot really do a lot. Lah. So I actually quite like uh don't know whether to do chapter one or more, uh, mix chapter one and two but then i feel that chapter two more important now so chapter one like in front of punya things there's a few things to actually like, fill in the blanks one so you try to do it yourself anything you can ask me see my number is always here you can ask me 
yeah, so this kind of thing, label, label one, what kind of what, and directional, anterior, posterior, all these kind of things. Okay, try to do yourself. Okay, anything you can ask me one. All right. Yes, uh, I will send you all the answer. Uh, this part, the answer I didn't do uh, because I thought in class we got time to do one, but yeah, this part, I will do the answers then only I will send to you all. Uh. Yeah, for those who are not my student, you all can go to the website. There's a Google Drive there to get the answers. Yeah, so I'll post the answers there very soon. Okay, so you try to do all this on yourself. Law. Can. So actually textbook can get answers one. Yeah, so you try to do chapter one. Chapter one, not really important one, honestly. Only first time ask in objective. So focus more on chapter two. Okay, so if no questions, then today we will stop here. Law. Can. Yeah, so that's it for today. Law. Bye-bye.